Okay, we're going to record. Hi, my name is Shannon Kringen, and I live in Seattle. I'm a human being, and I'm going to talk about um, topics today, and I have to be really careful what I say. I want to be as honest and authentic as possible without getting myself uh, I'm somebody who is skeptical of the and other things, and I want um, to assert my ethical right as a human being to not be coerced into doing things to my body that I don't want to do because I don't feel it's the right thing for my health. And I'm trying to speak about this without saying anything against the rules that's controversial. I was just in a therapy support group and somebody in the group, the facilitator of the group, mentioned something about a choice that she made and I found it very triggering and she was thinking that I felt threatened by her and other people in the group making a different choice than me. But really what I think the issue is, is that I feel concerned for people who are making a choice that I don't want to make about their health. And the laws are such that there's nothing any of us can do if things go wrong with certain things. See, I can't, I can't say because things are being People are being stopped from saying certain things. And we're being told that we need to be protected from certain people's opinions. So I'm going to try to say what I think without saying anything that would be against the rules. And that is challenging. And it is very psychologically upsetting and disturbing. You know, I feel like joking and saying, hey, everybody. I'm going to put my tinfoil hat on and go dance in the woods with Bigfoot. Want to join me? Because people actually like to belittle and make fun of people who question the mainstream idea <clears throat> that is being promoted in the world. Human beings were all individuals. And we are being bombarded with lots of information. And so I can see why people get overwhelmed and they want to be told what is correct and what is not correct. Because if you're being oversaturated with information, it's normal to feel overwhelmed and stressed out, especially if you're hearing things that contradict. One thing contradicts another and then you wonder what is true and what is real. And so I'm going to put my tinfoil hat on and dance in the forest with Bigfoot. Um, I had, okay, I'm going to read something from my journal. I will always question authority, by the way. And that doesn't mean I always think I'm right about my opinions. But I'm worried about asserting my right to do what I think is best for my body and my choices for my health. And I wouldn't want to deprive anyone of receiving something that they want. But I would be lying if I didn't admit that I'm concerned about losing my right to make this choice for my body. And I'm concerned about people making a certain choice that might not help them stay healthy and live a nice, long, healthy life. I'm trying to say very positive words and not say negative, uh, fearful, toxic words. I'm trying really hard. It's really uncomfortable to me that I'm not allowed to say, like what my actual opinion is about certain topics right now is against the rules on this platform. So free speech is now considered very dangerous. Free speech is now considered dangerous. 
and free speech is not being encouraged to be maintained. Cancel culture, virtue signal, et cetera, is being encouraged. So um, paint with all the colors you want. I had a great therapy session with my counselor. I read him 25 things I love about myself. I'm going to put my glasses on. I'm going to try to just slow down because let's be honest, my videos are not very popular. Um, I don't do fancy schmancy videos. My videos are not viral. They're not super popular. Um, so there's no reason for me to feel like I have to hurry up and, and say what I'm going to say. I'm just going to take my time. If anybody gets something out of this video, I'm grateful. And if hardly anybody watches this video, I'm okay with that. I just need to speak my truth. Um, so I wrote down 25 things I like about myself because my therapist was concerned that I was way too critical of myself and that the way I was raised by both my parents was adversarial in a certain way. I my therapist used the analogy that the relationship I have with each of my parents is a little bit like a magnet that wants to be attracted to the other magnet, but there's a negative polarity. I forgot what you call it when magnets repel each other. There's aspects of each of my parents that repel towards me. And so in order to really be loved by my parents, I felt like I had to not be my real self. Do I want to be my real self? Okay, well, then you have to be kind of rejected by your parents. And if you want to be your real self, um, and if you want to please your parents, then you have to kind of be a little bit fake and suppress who you really are. And so that's kind of what I might have learned as a child. This is my therapist's idea. I'm not sure if it's fully accurate. I also know that I was picked on by kids in school. So my therapist gave me a homework assignment of 25 things that I love about myself, since he already knows all the things that I don't like about myself. Um, and then I said, I've been so angry and red hot lately, it makes sense why, but I can also feel joy, love, kindness, freedom, peace, and harmony, can still feel angry and sadness and fear as well. I can feel all of it. So when I'm upset, my new thing that I'm going to try to remember to do when I'm really angry and upset and red hot with anger, because my therapist said I was sort of symbolically painting with red. In other words, focusing so much on my anger and my fear and not enough on maybe other things that I could be focusing on, like peace, love, joy, freedom, being around people who accept me and agree with my opinions about um, health. Um, there's a song called, I'm going to wrap you up in a beautiful blue. It's called Beautiful Blue. It's by Tom Petty and his band Mud Crutch. Not the Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, but Mud Crutch. Mud Crutch. I love Tom Petty. He widens my jetty. So when upset with red hot with anger, I can use this song to calm me down because my therapist said something about he was visualizing me having a nice scarf that I could wrap around my neck and just touch that would be really soft and some beautiful color that would be calming to me. Green is actually my favorite color. Um, but there's a Tom Petty song going to wrap you up in a beautiful blue and it's very soothing and it's called beautiful blue. So I'm going to remember to listen to that next time I get really angry. I might need to express and vent my anger and then calm myself down. So these are the 25 things that I like about myself by Shannon Kringen. And if you listening want to email me, cause I think I disabled my comments on this video, you can always email me, go to my website, shannonkringen.com and find my email and email me the favorite things that you love about yourself, the 25 things you love about yourself. Because I do like the idea of inspiring other people to love themselves and trust their own wisdom within. I wonder if that's controversial these days. I think it is. To, to tell somebody to trust themselves and listen to their own inner wisdom is not really a very popular thing to say these days because we're told to trust other people, not ourselves. Um, 25 Things I Like About Myself by Shannon Kringit. Number one, I'm a nonconformist. Number two, I'm left-handed. Number three, I'm an only child. 
Number four, I'm a highly sensitive person, otherwise known as HSP in all caps. I sense things that others don't notice at all. Number five, introvert who shares her unique ideas and inner world. I say that because some people that are introverts are very private and don't share very much with other people. And I'm one of these unique introverts that likes to share. So I guess writers and artists and actors and comedians <clears throat> are sometimes introverted in a creatively expressive way. So like they like to sit and write comedy or music or do art, and then they want to share it with the world and in a big way. And that's me. Uh, number six, naturally curly hair. I was blessed with naturally curly hair and I'm grateful. I love my hair. Um, <clears throat> Number seven, good DNA. Pretty hair, skin, nails, eyes, muscular legs, blessed with strong immune system. Number eight, had naturally large breasts, triple D. Uh, and I'm not saying that to be um, flirtatious or seductive or anything like that. I'm saying that, and I had breast reduction surgery in 1993. And now that I'm in my fifties, I sometimes miss my voluptuous large breasts, not to the point where I would ever want to get something fake put into my body. Um, but I had naturally large breasts that were triple D at the time of my surgery. If I would have just gotten more fit and trim, they would have I would have burned off the excess body fat to get down to a D probably, which would have been nice. But at the time, I didn't realize that. I was in my 20s and I had breast reduction surgery after thinking about it for years. So naturally large breasts. Number nine, good with animals. I'm very tuned into animals. That's a natural talent of mine. Number 10, empathy for others and self. I, I have, when I'm in a good mood, and not feeling really upset or defensive or sad or angry. I have a lot of empathy for other people, even people who I don't agree with. Today, I lost my cool in a therapy support group when certain topics were mentioned that triggered me. And then I asked for support in dealing with that. But I was so triggered that I got upset and left the group. So I'm a little bit embarrassed about that. But but generally, I'm really good at having empathy for myself and others. Number 11, I see and trust the wisdom in nature in terms of eating and sleeping and exercise and sunlight and hydration and spend, spending time forest bathing and eating in a species appropriate way. I even feed my cat a raw meat diet, which is good for him. Number 12, I question authority. And that's not a popular idea right now, but I still question authority. Number 13, not easily brainwashed or manipulated. I think that's actually a gift. People like me who are highly sensitive and have challenging childhoods where they're either abused or neglected, I think one of the upsides of going through traumatic experiences is that you are not, you are shocked. When you are neglected or abused as a child, or you go through any kind of traumatic experience that's shocking and upsetting, it wakes you up. And then you realize you can't always trust the authority figures that are raising you as a child. When somebody in your family violates your trust, you are shocked into realizing, oh, okay, nobody is perfect. These people don't know how to do things perfectly. So I'm not easily manipulated or brainwashed because I witnessed things going on around me. I just, I witnessed injustice and I witnessed things going on around me that were contradictory. And then I realized, oh, don't give your power away to these adults. So I'm just saying, I'm not easily brainwashed or manipulated. I question everything. Just because everyone's doing it doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. Just because something is banned or censored doesn't mean it's not true. And just because something is heavily promoted doesn't mean it's true. It also doesn't mean it's false. 
something could be true or false that's banned or censored, and something could be true or false that's heavily promoted and believed in. If you watch the movie Aaron Brockovich, you'll see what I mean. Sometimes corporations have products that are not what they say they are, and then they have to be taken to court, and you have to prove that something is not honest going on. So it's just Aaron Brockovich is a movie that is an example of something based on a true story. Um, number 14, I see shapes and patterns and make art, photos, paintings, poems. So in other words, I have a rich inner life and I express my art in response to what's inside me, I guess. And when I take photographs, I observe what's out in nature and then I take photographs and respond. So I guess I do respond to what's outside, but I see with my inner eye what's out in the world. And so that's how I create my art. Uh, and then when I do abstract non-representational art, I draw random shapes and colors that are non-representational, but it's similar to my photography in terms of it being improvisational and spontaneous. But when I look at my abstract art, I know I can see that some of the shapes and patterns I make are similar to what I see in tree branches. And um, if you look under a microscope at onions or, you know, have you ever seen those like microscopic pictures of nature? Um, the crystals of snowflakes. And if you're in an airplane and you look down at the geography and you see maps of land and rivers and streams and, and mountains, a lot of my artwork has shapes that's similar to the shapes I see in plants and animals and landscapes. And especially from an airplane looking down on the land far away. Um, Educated, okay, number 15, educated on nutrition, exercise, and sleep for body and mind health and for my cat. The way I eat and sleep and drink is good for my mental and physical health. And I've done a lot of research and educated myself about how to take care of my cat who's mildly diabetic and how to take care of myself. I had a thyroid issue, which I helped alleviate through nutrition. And I, I, you know, my doctor helped me through it and she recommended that I change my eating in a certain way. And then she was surprised when I actually did it and I stuck with it and now I don't need medication anymore. So that's just an example of me using nutrition to help my health. Um, okay. Number 16, attracted to trailblazers in both science and the arts. A lot of people I admire are very brave and they're trailblazers. And it takes a lot of strength to be a trailblazer because it's controversial and some people don't like it and some people are helped by it. So I'll just say that. I follow many artists and scientists and doctors and lawyers who are trailblazers. Erin Brockovich is definitely a trailblazer. She's an example of a trailblazer. Number 17, brave in standing alone when needed, in my opinions. Uh, today, I lost my cool, but lately I've been very strong in sticking with what I think is best for myself and trying to have better boundaries with other people who do different things that I think are not good for them. Um, oh my gosh, I have to turn that notification off. Okay. Okay. Hope you didn't hear that little beeping sound. Um, where am I? Number 18. Musical, sensitive, and a big lover of it. And I do some musical-ish art. I'm not really a musician. I wish that I was, but I'm not. I'm, I love Edie Brickell and Tori Amos and Tom Petty and Bob Dylan and Neil Young and Beck and Tom Waits and Jesse Sykes and Rafe Perlman and so many other musicians. I love so many musicians. 
My favorite songwriters, though, are Edie Brickell, Tori Amos, and Tom Petty, and Neil Young. I guess Bob Dylan could be in there, too, and Beck. I, I like Beck a lot as well. I like Miles Davis. I like Jimi Hendrix. I like lots of other musicians. I like Australian didgeridoo music. I like classical music. I love Mozart. I love <clears throat> pipe organs and slide guitar and twangy, you know, and there's some Japanese music I've listened to lately that I've liked, and I don't know what it's called, but it's on a show called Midnight Diner. And I love the music that they use in that show, Midnight Diner. It's Japanese. Um, I don't know anything about Japanese music, but I like a lot of the Japanese music I've heard. Um, number 19, synesthesia. I see shapes and textures and patterns when I hear sounds and music in general. So I realize that I do see shapes in my head that are abstract and swirling around and they look kind of like my artwork. When I hear music, I see shapes. And when I hear any sound, like the, I have a fan going on behind me and I can sense the texture of the sound. Like sounds to me are textures. And I think it's always been that way. Um, I don't just hear a sound that's invisible. I see a texture that goes with the sound. Number 20, I understand symbolism, metaphor, and analogy. I took a film as art class in high school and I, I wrote really good papers on the symbolism and motifs and metaphors that I saw in foreshadowing that I saw in Alfred Hitchcock and James, wait, Peckinpah? I forgot his first name, Peckinpah, Sam Peckinpah. We used to watch in, in high school, uh, Sam, Mr. Bernhard's at South Woodby High School, Mr. Bernhard's film is art class. And I got A's on all my papers because Mr. Bernhard said, Shannon understands. So I was gifted as a teenager in writing papers on film as art in terms of symbolism and foreshadowing. And my instructor said I was very perceptive about the symbolism in films and that I had some unique ideas in addition to being insightful and perceptive about what they probably meant. So I am really good at metaphors and analogies and symbolism in art and music and dance and um, creative expression. Number 21, creative, open-minded, multimedia creator. People say I inspire them. So I'm inspired by there being no limitations to music, art, theater, dance, drawing, painting, photography, art modeling, music. To me, it's all connected and it's all related. And I think kind of like Vandana Shiva. Vandana Shiva from India thinks in terms of holistic plants, animals, the whole ecosystem, the chemical industry, the pesticides, the fertilizers, the pharmaceutical companies, all of it is connected and science is all connected and spirituality. To me, you don't have to choose between, um, I'm not religious, but spirituality and science go hand in hand for me. So I don't understand people who think you have to do one or the other. And so I think that my multimedia philosophy about art is similar to my multimedia philosophy about science and spirituality being can coexist and not contradict each other. The creative force of nature and consciousness. Um, so, and also Laurie Anderson, the artist Laurie Anderson talked about this, about how not needing to pick one art form and one media. She's a multimedia artist, mostly does sound and performance art on stage but she's also done visual art and music. And she, I just, I love the art of Laurie Anderson. And I have, since I was a teenager, my uncle introduced me to her work. So I feel a kinship with Laurie Anderson's attitude about multimedia. And, you know, if you're somebody who just wants to do photography or just painting or just music or just dance, and you love that and you want to just focus and stick with that, I think that's great. But I think if you're an artist who likes to do multimedia, you shouldn't have to just pick one thing and stick with it if your real passion is multimedia. Because then you can create things that nobody else has created with music and art and combine. 
Uh, one reason why I like making videos sometimes is because it's audio visual, it's motion, it's, it's visual, it's auditory, you know, it's sound and it's visual and it's movement and motion. It's all of it. So um, multimedia and that I inspire people have told me that I've inspired them that they can do whatever it was they were afraid of doing and that I'm living proof that they can experiment and see what happens and not be a perfectionist. I also like the idea of taking photos of people that think they're not photogenic and try to cheer them up because I've used photography. I've used self-portrait photography to boost my self-esteem and to express parts of myself that would not come out otherwise. Um, number 22, intuitive and perceptive. Um, I built my art model career and improvisational monologues as Goddess Kring. And so nobody could have taught me how to do, like when I first got into art modeling in 1992, I didn't know I could do it full time. And it took five or six or seven years to build up to do it full time. So, and I created that from nothing. I just learned as I went and met people and they helped me. And then I was, I proved I was a good model and people kept hiring me. And then I ended up working at 20 different places and three different medical schools, et cetera, or four different, three or four medical schools and several art schools. Um, and then my Goddess Kring TV show that I created myself, I just did my own improvisational monologues and I taught myself how to do that. Nobody taught me how to do that. I just had to, I just did it myself. And I'm sure that I'm, I've been inspired by lots of artists and musicians and singers and dancers and actors over ever since I was a little kid. I've always been a little shy and I've always liked to observe other people. And so I'm sure that I've learned a lot from other people. But when I did my Goddess Kring TV show, I did it every week for 28 minutes for 15 years in a row. And I just, every week, I just made it up as I went. And I just did improvisational monologues and dances and poems. And a lot of people thought I was on drugs and stoned, but I never was. I don't, I don't drink alcohol. I don't smoke marijuana. I don't like drugs personally. I never was on drugs. I just have my own like style that seems like I'm chemically altered, but I'm not, this is just my natural, <laughs> whatever that I did. So Intuitive, perceptive, built my art model career, improv monologues, goddess cream. Okay, number 23. I appreciate everyone's individuality, people, plants, and animals. And so I feel like nowadays a lot of people are stereotyping people as anti this and pro that or political party. You're this, you're that, you're, you're this kind of person versus that kind of person. And it's, I think it's really hard to be a human and not want to categorize people into different categories of the kind of person they are. But I think one of my talents is to appreciate everyone's individuality. Of course, when I meet somebody, I see what gender they are or what ethnicity they are, or they tell me what their religion is, or they're an atheist, or they're a introvert, extrovert, left-handed, right-handed, they're this, a political this, political that, whatever it is. Okay, that's a basic level of who they are. But on a deeper level, everyone is unique. On a deep level, on a more spiritual soul, heart and soul and unique brain and fingerprint, literally a fingerprint level, we are all unique individuals. And I think that that is precious. And I appreciate people's individuality. And I, I honestly think if more people would think in those terms, maybe we would have less fear of each other and less conflict in the world. Not that I have the answer to how to solve prejudice and how to solve all of the problems that humans have with each other and plants and animals. Humans dominate the plants and animals, which is also another problem, which is speciesism. So I'd like to think that one of my skills that I appreciate and I wish was bigger in the world was taking, appreciating people, plants and animals as individuals even like a pine tree. Every pine tree is its own pine tree. They're not all the same. So, um, and every eucalyptus tree, you know, eucalyptus trees are my favorite. Um, I grew up in San Diego with lots of eucalyptus trees and I love the way they smell, but every eucalyptus tree is different. It's not the same. Um, 
And then number 24, fresh eye, beginner's mind, like a child seeing the wonder of life. And there's pros and cons to having this trait because people will accuse you of being childlike and being immature. And maybe I am a little bit immature and childlike at times, but the upside of that is that I have a fresh eye. I'm like the Zen Buddhist beginner's mind. I can walk down the street and go like, wow, look at that flower. Wow, look at that cloud. Like as if I've never seen a cloud before or I've never seen a flower before. I am, if I'm open to life in a positive way, I feel easily impressed with the fresh day ahead of me. And that's a good trait to have, I think. And I like that about myself and anyone else who has this trait, I like. Number 25, autistic in my own artistic way. Now, I don't really know if I'm autistic. I'm self-diagnosing when I say that, but I really identify with a lot of what Temple Grandin has said about having a specialized mind. I'm really good at some things and really bad at other things. I'm very socially awkward. I don't easily make friends with people. I'm highly sensitive. I'm easily overwhelmed. I'm easily confused, even though I'm really smart. Like I'm my memory is kind of like really good and really bad at the same time. I have certain obsessive interests and then I'm really not interested in a lot of things. I'm really bored by things that other people find interesting and vice versa. I'm really attracted to weird things that other people don't even want to know about. So I feel like I'm very eccentric. It doesn't matter if autism, if the autism label fits me or not. And I'm not saying that to put myself down. I'm just saying, I think my brain is a little different and that I get irritated by things that other people enjoy and vice versa. I enjoy things that other people are irritated by. So part of loving and accepting myself is to acknowledge what I like and what I don't like and trying to build my life around what works for me and try to say no as much as possible to doing things that I don't believe in or like. So thanks for listening. This is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. I'm going to turn that off. Okay. So I was just reading that and hopefully the camera looks okay. I'm going to blow a bubble. I don't know. I think this video has probably been long enough. Ah, I'm going to blow a bubble. Whoa. Bubbles. Oh, oh man. I tasted the, <coughs> the soap tastes horrible. And I'm sure that's not good for me to eat. Okay. Ooh, God, that was weird. Um, so my name is Shannon Kringen. This is Goddess Kring video. I feel better now that I spoke my mind. I asserted what I like about myself. Um, I hope that I can learn to find like-minded people that I can share empathy, compassion, and support with. I hope that I can have better boundaries with people making choices that I don't agree with or believe in. And quite honestly, I'm worried about the safety of certain people that I know, people in my family, and somebody else that I'm very close to in my life. There's three main people in my life that I'm very close to, and I'm concerned for their safety in terms of the next few years of their life. I won't go into detail because it's controversial. My opinion about this topic is controversial. And so I'm not going to, this video is just about me expressing the psychological discomfort that I have in having the opinions that I have that are seem like common sense to me, but they're considered controversial to the general population. So thanks for listening. This is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring in Seattle. I'm an open-minded free thinker and I will always question authority. So, and I made this necklace. That's why I wore it today. And I, and I silk screened this shirt that I'm wearing. So there it is. Bye for now.